Halo Infinite's population continues to drop, or is it really? MCC news coming around the corner, and the Twitch drops for this weekend's HCS event has been revealed, but some 152 grinders from Halo 5 might not be happy about it. You want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So a big talking point right now within the community is the population of Halo Infinite and how many people are still playing it. Is it bleeding players and is there no possibility of ever coming back? Well, this article over here from Paul Tassi, how the population has dropped below the top five on Xbox right now, as he points out that Roblox has more players right now than Halo Infinite. And if Halo Infinite's meant to be kind of like a, you know, a console seller kind of game, you kind of hope that to be a little bit higher because we've only been seeing it declining. We haven't really seen any kind of boost in player counts. We've seen little boost here and there with the random events and things like that, but nothing really happening a whole lot when it comes to the population besides just kind of going down and leveling out. It brings up the Steam numbers right here, and also, you gotta keep in mind, these are just the Steam platform numbers. They don't mention anything about the Xbox platform or anything about Game Pass and things like that. Certainly keep that in mind, but yeah, definitely the population has dropped quite a bit when it comes to the Steam numbers, and that's the only like actual numbers we have to go off of. But you can definitely see how it's starting to kind of level out a bit more, but right now, but peaking at a 24 hour average kind of around i seen anywhere from like 25,000 to about 36,000 kind of anywhere between it depending if there's a new event or if it's a weeknight kind of thing or if it's a weekend kind of thing as well um but i asked you guys on here on my channel what your thoughts on the population right now for like average peak concurrent count and i was kind of surprised with this number because i went on my channel here guys and i asked you i ask you questions all the time on my channel if you guys want to take part of these polls make sure you subscribe to the channel but i asked uh what do you think about the peak population concurrent player count for halo infinite is on average i said like 20 to 50 000, 60 to 100 000, 110 to 150 000, and up to 200 000 plus and stuff like that and over 50 percent of you which is five over 5.5 a votes said the peak average population is anywhere from 20 to 50,000 people. And I'm sorry, but that's just not correct. I think we just see that Steam player count. And we're like, oh my God, those are all the people playing Halo Infinite right now. And that's just not the case at all. In fact, Halo Infinite is doing quite well on the Xbox. As I check this morning at what, 10 o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday, that Halo Infinite has bounced back up into the top five slot of the most played games on Xbox. So it's not all doom and gloom and everyone's jumping ship right now. They probably just caught it at like a weeknight kind of random time. Maybe there was a Roblox update or something. I don't know. But I think we're kind of getting to that point right now where we're kind of starting to get that leveling off of the population where we're kind of hitting that plateau of like, yeah, it's probably about the average amount of people playing now. We don't have the exact numbers shared on Xbox, obviously. Uh, there was a report going around talking about uh, that they were able to track some Xbox users and saying there's like a few hundred thousand people playing Halo Infinite uh, within a given time, which is great to hear, don't get me wrong. Uh, but we just, you know, I can't really trust it because that's kind of like third party roundabout information that's like, it sounds promising, it sounds like it makes sense, but you can't take it uh, literally. Where this is like literally the most played games here on Xbox being showcased right here and Halo Infinite being top five behind only Fortnite, Warzone, Grand Theft Auto, and Apex. I'm quite happy with that placement because I don't know what your guys' expectations are for Halo Infinite's population, but I never thought that Halo could be more popular than Fortnite, Warzone, even Apex, you know, those kind of games, or even Grand Theft Auto. Those games are incredibly popular, like kind of stratosphere, like so hard to reach level of popularity. And I think we're sitting quite well, honestly, with population. It might seem all doom and gloom on Steam, but also you gotta think that's the Steam numbers only for mainly the PC population. And for most PC players, they like to play on mouse and keyboard. And let's be honest, Halo Infinite doesn't really play out that well on mouse and keyboard. You're kind of getting outclassed by controller players, which could certainly hurt the population as well. It's not just not enough content or things to do in the game, because we're all rabid fans. If you're watching this video, most likely you're a rabid fan of Halo and you want to burn through all the content as much as, as quickly as possible to experience everything it has to offer. And well, we already did that. I feel like this is kind of the reason why most games out there have removed population counters within their games because people see that number go down and they start saying, oh my God, the sky is falling. When in reality, it's just kind of the natural course, especially when it comes to like arena shooters. Like we, even on, you know, people bring up the Twitch numbers and stuff like that as well. And, well, arena shooters really don't do that well on Twitch. The only other like really popular games out there are like, well, like Rainbow Six Siege, uh, Call of Duty Vanguard and Destiny. And they never really do that great. 
great. And Destiny does all right when like there's ever like a trials event happening, but other than that, not a whole lot. Most people like watching battle royales and other types of games. And before I get too long winded in this video, I want to go into the next topic here. Some MCC news looks like it might be happening as we haven't really heard much at all since Halo Infinite's launch. This Reddit user goes on here kind of talking about all the different kinds of additions that they would like to see with MCC and the various other games within there and talking about how like there's some things that need to be fixed, some things they would like to see and stuff like that. And actually Barnes from 343 says, thanks for the kind words, the MCC team really appreciate it. But stay tuned, there's more, saying that they are in the early stages of spinning up an MCC-centric blog that will highlight some of the work that we'll be doing throughout the year. Oh, and there's also our first game update of the year as well. So we're getting an update for the MCC with some big news updates coming as well, guys. So the MCC is not just left alone to die and have Halo Infinite be the shining gem, but there actually is something going to be happening with MCC. And as soon as we get that information, I'll make sure to share it on the channel with you guys. But it's great to see that MCC is getting some love. Now, if you guys don't know, there is HCS Anaheim happening this weekend where all the pro players are gonna be able to play on land, but it's gonna be an online event as in all the pro players will be in person, but there will be no spectators. But we have the list of casters announced right here for the event, which is awesome to see. You know, I love to see the all-star casting. We got Bravo, Clutch, Golden Boy, Lady Echidna, Shyway. We got our boy Tony, why not be casting? Jumping into the situation as well. So this is gonna be great to see this awesome lineup, guys. You're gonna definitely wanna watch this weekend because there are Twitch drops with this event as well. And some 152 grinders from Halo 5 might not be too happy about it. And here is the Twitch drop, guys. Now, what, how you get a Twitch drop is that you link your Xbox account with your Twitch account, and then you'll be able to get these drops. And basically, most of the time, you have to be watching for at least an hour straight, then you're eligible for these drops. This is what happened during the Raleigh event. This is what happened the previous weekend as well for that Xbox 2v2 thing that we talked about, where they had a Twitch drop as well. So most likely, you have to at least have your Twitch app open for an hour watching some HCS, and you'll be able to get these pretty sweet looking coatings, honestly. Like, they look really nice. Uh, we've got a battle rifle we also have a sidekick and an assault rifle also coming around with a new emblem for this whole event which actually does look pretty awesome not gonna lie and then also you get a cool stance all you gotta do is watch hs for an hour and boom there you go no problem you get guys like that's not that hard to do and I think you get all of this if you watch for just one hour, but I'm not going to clarify that later on. But these look pretty awesome. But like I said, the 152 grinders from Halo 5 might not be too happy about these skins because they might be looking a little familiar. Mint Blitz shared this on his Twitter, but some Reddit user, some eagle eyed really Reddit users are able to notice that on the left here, you see that this is the new HCS code to be evolved for the Twitch drops. But on the right side, is the 152 watchdog coding. And you can quite see the similarities here where essentially they just kind of added in some blue when it came to the uh, HDS skin. So I think your yeah, 152 grinders might not be too happy about this. Yes, it's not the same coding, but effectively the same coding as well, which could be, well, a little uh, upsetting for some of you 152 grinders. This is why I did not want to get 152 in Halo 5. I figured something like this would happen or some, or some other kind of coding that would come out would look a little bit more interesting to me because Watchdog does look great, don't get me wrong, but uh, it just doesn't really seem that interesting where I'm like, oh my God, I need to have this coding. And well, it looks like HTS might be kind of like take, you know, copy my homework, but don't make it look exactly the same kind of situation. And uh, well, I don't know how I feel about this, but hey, you at least should be able to get the somewhat like a watchdog coding for only an hour worth of your time instead of like 18 plus you know, hundreds of hours of your time to get 152 like you had to do in Halo 5. But if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I'm gonna link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.